The uh, CT6 traction splint is a significant investment by the QAS in patient care. The Donway has been a long doyen of the service and done us really well for the last 10 years or so. But as technology has improved, it's important that the QAS moves with that technology. The QT CT6 offers the following advantages. It's light, it's small, it's easy to use. It can be used on pediatric patients. It actually can be used for patients with bilateral femoral fractures, which we haven't been able to do with the Donways previously. And most importantly, it can also be applied to patients who have a pelvic splint in situ. It's important to recognise that the application of a traction splint to fem femoral fractures is a very important part of haemorrhage control and analgesia. So these are priority for patients who are suffering significant trauma and have a femoral fracture. We do understand that a number of our patients have potentially a significant pelvic fracture as well as a femoral fracture. With the new CT6 splint, we can apply the pelvic binder firstly and then apply the CT6 traction splint to our potential femoral fracture as well. It's important to do it in that order. Remembering, you're more likely to bleed to death from a fractured pelvis initially than you are from a femur. But addressing the femoral fracture is very important because it does reduce long-term morbidity and mortality with that condition, especially when applied early. So it is a priority of care. Over the years, paramedics have asked me, what type of splint do we use for particular fractures of the lower limb? It's important to recognise that the CT6 is not to be used for neck or femur fractures. The use of the CT6 is for shaft fractures of the femur, not involving the knee joint. For fractures of the knee joint, or the tibia or ankle, we use the vacuum splints that are supplied by the ambulance service. A long leg vacuum splint is to be used for all fractures of the knee or the proximal two thirds of the tibia. For fractures involving the distal one third of the tibia and the ankle, a short leg vacuum splint with the leg placed into anatomical position uh, is the way to go. By now, you will have read the Lassen Directive on the CT6 splint. I know you will have committed it to memory. From here, you're watching this video, which will demonstrate the application of the splint. So the next thing you do is, with a work colleague is to apply a splint to each other and get to know the workings of the splint so they can adequately perform it in an operational environment. The next thing to do is to go to LMS and complete the self sign off. From there, you're free to use the CT6 and it'll be a very important part of your patient care. The CT6 is a traction splint that aligns and immobilizes femoral fractures. The splint reduces muscle spasms, pain, and helps prevent blood loss and any further damage to anatomical structures. The splint comes complete in this small kit bag, making it easy to store and transport. The CT6 uses this adjustable ischial strap around the upper thigh. This is the ankle hitch, and it consists of the ankle strap, the foot strap, and the safety clip, and it is used to hold the foot in place while traction is applied. This is the splint assembly, and it comprises of a multi-link tubular frame, leg straps, and the tension-adjusting block and line mechanism. The extension strap is used to lengthen the upper thigh strap for larger patients. We will now demonstrate the use of the CT6 traction leg splint. Step 1. Assess the injury. Expose the affected limb. And assess the limb for distal perfusion. Step 2. Remove the splint from the bag. Release the external bag straps and remove the splint from the bag. Step 3. Assembly. As the splint is removed from the bag, hold it at shoulder height and shake it up and down, allowing the tubes to hang and intersect. Now manually connect any unlinked sections. Step 4. Sizing. To gauge the correct length, place the unit alongside the uninjured leg. Now the ischial cap should align with the top of the patient's pelvic crest, with the ankle hitch end approximately 15 centimetres beyond the bottom of the patient's foot. Step 5. Adjust length. If the splint appears to be too short or too long, tube section should be added or removed as necessary for correct sizing. Now here the correct size is accomplished by removing the ischial cap and one piece of tubing folded back. Now secure any disconnected sections with the ischial cap. Step 6. Attach strap. 
move the splint alongside the injured leg and align two straps above the knee and two straps below the knee. Now take care not to strap over the injury or over the knee. Unclip one end of the strap from the ischial cap and place the strap under the patient's upper inner thigh. Reattach the appropriate end to the ischial cap and attach the clip. Now ensure the buckle is on top of the patient's thigh so adjustments can be made. And then tighten the buckle strap. Step 7. Attach ankle hitch. Unwrap the Velcro strap and align the hitch with the patient's leg. Now gently lift the patient's foot enough to allow the hitch to be slid under the patient's ankle. The thicker strap should be positioned to be wrapped around the patient's ankle directly above the foot. The second strap should run beneath the patient's foot and align equally on opposite sides of the patient's ankle. Tighten the strap to minimise the distance between itself and the bottom of the patient's foot. Step 8. Traction. Pull the line to apply a minimum amount of traction so that the splint is resting in its appropriate position. Now this can be achieved by pulling the loose end of the line exiting the purchase block and line mechanism below the patient's foot. Now lift the line up into the V-jam cleat to achieve tension and the V-jam cleat will hold the line secure. Step 9. Securing and Applying Traction The first strap is placed around the upper inner thigh, ideally above the fracture. The second strap is wrapped above the knee, ideally below the fracture. The third strap is placed below the knee, and the fourth strap is placed directly above the ankle hitch. Now apply traction as required by readjusting the tension until the patient's comfort is achieved. Applying traction with the CT6 splint is a little different to what we're used to with the Donway. As you know with the Donway we uh, have a nice gauge that gives us a reference point when we have enough traction applied. Now with the CT6 it's a little different. What you'll have to rely on is actually clinical information that you're seeing when you're actually applying the traction. So when you're applying the traction with the pulley system, you should see the leg lengthen. And really what you should be aiming for is getting the length of the injured leg to, to be the same length as the uninjured leg. Now, in the unlikely event that it's a bilateral femoral shaft fracture, uh, what you'll have to do is just watch the legs. Now, you'll actually see the effect of traction on the thigh area when you pull the traction on, and that will give you good feedback about how much traction you have applied. But remember, traction is very, very important. And while we're thinking about traction, you may actually have a compound or an open fracture. And remember, it's very important that we liberally wash that wound. And that is with at least a litre of normal saline, because what we don't want to do is see that bone retract into the, into the leg or thigh cavity uh, covered in dirt. So it's very, very important that we give it a good wash before traction is, is applied. Lift the line and re-lock into the V-jam cleat. Step 10. Final adjustments. Tuck any excess line under the leg strap. Now check the splint is correctly in place and achieving the desired results and make any final adjustments. The traction pulley can be shortened if needed. Firstly, the upper thigh strap can be loosened. Pull on the loose line and reapply traction as needed. Tuck any excess line under the leg strap. The CT6 can be applied after the pelvic binder is in place. The CT6 can be applied to bilateral femoral shaft fractures. And the CT6 can be applied to children with fractured femurs. Repackaging the CT6. Reattach the ischial strap to the splint. Reroll the ankle strap and secure it with Velcro. Now ensure the straps are straight and none of them are hanging over the connected segments. Now pull each segment and fold it back on top of itself until you get to a tight little bundle. Now pull the ankle hitch through the unit and roll the unit. Best results are achieved when the straps are stacked in pairs and the ankle hitch is free of the roll. Now place the CT6 back into the bag, ankle hitch side first for easy deployment. And that covers it for the CT6 traction leg splint. Now make sure you get your hands on one and have a play prior to deployment.